Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at the Python implementation of each of the four sorting algorithms we looked at. So we'll first look at insertion sort. So we'll remind ourselves that insertion sort works by taking two elements, sorting them, adding the next element in, sorting the three of them, adding the next element in, sorting the four of them, and so on. So our main program is fairly simple. We declare the array, we print it out first, show it unsorted, then we call our insertion sort program, then we print out our sorted solution. The insertion sort module itself, it has two loops. It has a for loop that goes from one to the length of the array, and it says that the current value is whatever the first element and the second and the third. Keeps looping around as long as we don't move the value to the start, we keep on going either until we reach the start of the array or that the position, the previous value, is bigger than the current value being looked at. And we keep moving the values across and we keep doing that in a for loop and we'll sort the whole array using insertion sort. So there isn't really much difference between the Python code and the pseudocode in this case. Now let's look at shell sort. As we remember, shell sort is a variation on insertion sort, where instead of sorting by each value, we sort by every nth value to reduce the computational expense of it. So our main program is exactly the same as insertion sort. We declare the array, we print out the unsorted array, then we sort, then we print out the sorted array at the end to make sure it's working. Our shell sort, which is our main method, our module, but not the only one, our shell sort says Figure out the length of the array and divide it by two, then keep looping around, uh, keep, keep subdividing the list un uh, until we have just one element in the list, and then we have a for loop, uh, in, which is starting counting all the values in the sub list, and then we call it another method called gap insertion sort. So it's exactly like our, our insertion sort code, except instead of insert, doing insertion sort by one value each time, we do it by this value gap which is in this case a variable called sublist count. And we can have our printout that shows the, how the list is after each iteration of the gap insertion sort. So let's look at the code for the gap insertion sort. It's exactly like the Python. Instead of incrementing by one, we're incrementing by gap all the time. So there's nothing strange in the Python code here. It's exactly like the pseudocode. We'll look at merge sort. Merge sort, we remember, is divide and conquer. There's two bits to it. We keep splitting the array into subarrays until we've reached one element per subarray, and then that's all sorted. So then we merge the subarrays together. And again, we'll recall we're doing this recursively, so the fact that we're pushing values onto the stack and popping them off is the reason this technique works. So our main program is exactly as before. And then we have our merge sort which says split the array in half, a left half and a right half, and then we call merge sort recursively the program itself to merge sort the left half and merge sort the right half. We have our counters as before, left half counter, right half counter, and finished array, and then we check if the value in the left half, which value is bigger, which value is smaller, the left half or the right half, whichever is smaller we write into the main array, and then we keep doing that. And then whatever values are left, either in, in the left array or the right array, we write those into the main array as well, and then we're done. So there's nothing strange in the Python code there that you won't see in the pseudocode. And then our last one is Tony Hort's quick sort. So quick sort, we know we take a pivot value, we have a left pointer and a right pointer, and we move, look for the left pointer, a value that's bigger than the pivot, and a right value smaller than the pivot, and we keep swapping them around. Then we swap the pivot into its value and we do that same quick sort recursively with the subarrays either side of the pivot. Our main program is exactly as before. We have a, a quick sort that simply calls main quick sort that does the array name where we start and where we finish. And then our main quick sort says calculate a pivot point using the partition module or method, and then main sort 
uh, the subarray before the partition and the subarray after the partition or pivot point, which I've called split point in this code. So then our partition code is really the interesting code. And our partition says, select the first element as the pivot, then have a left pointer and a right pointer, and keep going until we find a value that's bigger than the a value that's bigger than the pivot on the left and smaller than the pivot on the right. And when we do that, swap them around. Uh, and I've showed the swap there in detail. And uh, once we've all that done, then we, we do our final swap, which is of the pivot with it itself in its correct position. So that's quick sort. So you, you need to have a look at that code, run it, practice it, put in print statements, make it work for you. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.